improved its guidance in the latest production report. What does this mean for ERA share price? Do you think they're moving forward? Well, ERA, the uranium producer, uh, the share price performing quite well. It is positive territory this morning. Uh, I think the share price performance is really on the back of the slightly upgraded guidance we saw in their March quarterly report. Uh, the uranium oxide that they're mining, that the production was up around 18%, which was a positive, though total materials mined was down around 50%. Uh, the guidance upgrade was a small guidance upgrade to the lower end of, uh, of it. It's coming up to 3,200 to 3,700 tonnes for the full year. Uh, previously, the lower end of that guidance was only 3,000 tonnes. So the market reacting a little positively there. Uh, the future for, future for ERA really depends on its Ranger 3 Deeps project. This is an extension of the Ranger mine they have up in the Northern Territory. Now, this um, extension, it needs to be proved to be economically viable, and it also needs uh, stakeholder support for the project. Now, um, there's not a whole lot of news that will be likely coming out from uh, ERA on this until sort of mid-2013. So the only thing driving sort of share price until then will be sort of quarterly production results. Uh, so ERA share price probably going to trade around a level where the market expects that this project is not going to go ahead for the time being until some positive news comes out about the viability of it. The upside will be that this is proved economically viable and it goes ahead. Uh, if this does happen, uh, ERA's valuation could go up sort of $2.50 or even higher. Um, in the near term, it is the wet season up there and the wet season always poses the big risks to these kinds of mines. Um, it could hamper further on production. Uh, the other uranium stock that's always in focus on our market, Paladin, it's been having a bit of a hard time of it lately. We've seen a few downgrades uh, due to high debt levels and so, uh, soft uranium prices. Uh, today it's doing a little bit better on the back of a, um, a strategic update to the market. I've got to ask you, obviously we've had a bit of local economic data out today. Uh, what do you think, has that made much of an impact on the Aussie dollar? We've seen it slightly improve and obviously there's more data out later in the week. What will be key to watch? Well, we have had a little bit of positive economic data out here locally today, and that had that did help the boost the Aussie dollar a little this morning, and also the Aussie market. We've seen the Aussie dollar just pull back a little bit um, over the last half hour, but it was that jobs data and business confidence uh, that did help boost the Aussie dollar a little bit. Uh, NAB show, NAB's business confidence and uh, condition surveys both ticked upwards for the month. Uh, so that shows that uh, businesses have a bit more of a positive outlook on conditions at the moment. Though the sort of two-speed economy, economy was again highlighted in these reads. We saw the likes of the sort of retailers, manufacturing and construction uh, sectors all weighing on that read. Uh, ANZ job ads, that ticked up another 1% for March. That's ahead of um, the official employment data figures that are due out on Thursday. Uh, that read probably going to come in around flat to maybe a gain of around five or 6,000 jobs. And we may just see an uptick in unemployment to 5.3%. Uh, this will be in focus, particularly with upcoming uh, expectations of rate cuts from the RBA. Uh, but the key data, I think, this week really coming out of China. Today we saw the trade balance. That actually came in at a, around a $5 billion surplus. A uh, $3 billion deficit was expected. Uh, exports came in slightly better than expected, while imports actually had quite a drop. Um, so that, that's had uh, not much an effect on the Australian market so far, uh, as it wasn't too far from expectations. But the big data coming out will be on Friday. We've got first quarter GDP from China, around 8.4% year on year is expected there. Also uh, industrial production figures as well as retail sales figures. These will be the big key uh, pieces of economic data for the Australian market this, year, this week and it will be the biggest driver, particularly our resources and materials stocks. Again, we see BHP today just hovering just above that $34 level. Uh, that's been a very key resistance level, uh, support level, I'm sorry, uh, for BHP over the last year or so. We've seen it bounce off that level a few times. And this data coming out of China this week may be a determinant of whether it breaks through that level or it again bounces higher. Just finally, we've seen a slight improvement uh, with stocks today. They started off down about 1%. They're now off about two-thirds of a percent. Where are we taking our leads from and, and why do you think we've managed to just to ease back those, ga those losses slightly? Well, that initial 1% drop this morning was most definitely in reaction to those uh, non-farm payrolls we saw on Friday, only 120,000 jobs gained, and also a slightly higher than expected Chinese inflation figure coming out yesterday. So that, uh, we have paired back some of those losses, as mentioned, a few pieces of uh, good local economic data here. Uh, but on the market today, we can see a big drag is the energy sector. It's off around 1.5%. Uh, we saw oil prices fall below $103 a barrel again. 
uh, Woodside Petroleum, it's off almost 2%. Uh, they've just delay delayed their decision on a $30 billion gas hub in the Kimberley, so weighing on the, on the energy sector there. Uh, the healthcare and discretionary, surprisingly, uh, they're also down today, often on sort of a down day in the market. Some of those defensive sectors tend to outperform, but the healthcare sector actually down 2% today. Well, it's the financials, um, industrials and property sectors which are the better performers on the market. Um, Ozstar, obviously a standout performer, it's up 2.5% following the ACCC's decision with relation to that Foxtel's takeover uh, offer will be approved by the ACCC. Uh, looking forward this week in the market will be the start of first quarter earnings season in the US. Uh, so we have seen expectations for this season watered down significantly over the past few months. Uh, a Standard & Poor's survey shows that first quarter growth in earnings per share may be only around 1% on the previous quarter, first quarter in 2011, while Thomson Reuters data show that S&P 500 companies, their earnings may only grow around 3%, following a 9% gain in the fourth quarter last year. So this will be a big driver of uh, US markets over coming weeks, and it will surely will filter through to the Australian market as well.